Right here next to me, I have the new PC Panel Mini. I'm gonna show you how it stacks up to their older PC Panel Maplewood and their brand new PC Panel Pro. Now this is a full disclosure I make in the beginning of all my PC Panel related videos. I do work with and get paid by PC Panel to make advertising photo and videos for them. If you wanna check one out, I have a video link up here. They're not paying me to say anything in this video. This video is not sponsored at all. And they sent me these pre-production prototypes to show off for you guys. Now let's talk about the build of the new PC Panel Mini. It has four chrome knobs that also act as buttons. These are the same ones that are found on the older Maplewood version and their newer Pro model. It shares very similar design and size to their older Maple version, but it's been refreshed with an aluminum casing and a glossy black front. The Mini also comes with a USB Type-C port and about a six foot long braided USB Type-C to Type-A cable. In the box also comes double-sided adhesive, which you can use to mount the Mini underneath your desk, if you prefer it that way. Overall, the build quality of the Mini feels very solid. The hefty build, as well as rubber feet on the bottom, makes it feel like a very solid piece on your desk. So now I'll talk about what it actually does. The whole purpose of a PC panel, since the original wood model, was to be able to control the sounds of different applications without having to tab out and go through a volume mixer. This stays true to that while adding new features such as OBS and voice meter integration. And all the features I'm about to talk about are included in the Pro and their previously released RGB model, but not for the wood one. The wood one's running on an older software that doesn't have the same features as these newer ones. The nine different features as listed in their software go keystroke, shortcut, music control, and program, sound device, toggle device, mute app, mute device, and profile. I'll run through what each one does really quickly. Keystroke lets you set up a custom command. Let's say there's no integration for Photoshop, but you wanna set a button to do Control S for save or Control Z for undo. You can set that in the software. Next, we have shortcut. So if you wanna launch an app automatically by pressing a button, you can set it to launch something like Photoshop, Chrome, Discord, whatever you want. Next up is music control. If you don't have media keys on your keyboard, this could be very useful. If you wanna do pause, play, forward or backwards rewinds, then you can set up the PC panel buttons to do that. Next, we have end program. If you just wanna kill whatever the active program is, you can go ahead and do that. So next, I'll combine sound device and toggle sound device because they're basically the same feature. They allow you to switch different sound devices. So this could be your physical headphones you wanna change over to some speakers on your computer, or if you wanna change from your desktop microphone to a wireless on the go microphone, you could do that with the push of a button. Next, we have mute app and mute device. Those are pretty self-explanatory. And then the last function is profile switching, by far one of my favorites. What this lets you do is set up a full array of PC panel commands, and then you leave the last knob to be a profile switcher. So then you can switch into a new profile that has completely different commands and different knob settings. Now, all these button configurations I just talked about don't even include the OBS and voice meter additional support where you can configure more parts of your PC panel. So now moving on to the functions of the knobs. First, we have the app volume. This lets you control any specific app that you want. You can set it up to be like Spotify.exe, Chrome.exe, whichever, that knob will always control that specific program. Up next, we have the focus volume. Now this one's very interesting, so stick with me. Let's say you have a program, it's not programmed into your PC panel at all, but you wanna control it. So you click on that window, and then with the focus volume, you can change it. And then if you click off to a different window, you can change that window instead. So it only affects the program that is currently selected on the screen, incredibly useful. And then lastly, we have device volume. This lets you control the overall volume for your device, such as your headphones, your speakers, or if you have a game console or a camera plugged in, you can change the volume of those devices too. Really useful feature. Lastly, we have the lighting configuration. This heavily has less lighting modes than the Pro model I also talked about, but you can do some cool effects, such as a rainbow, a wave, or a kind of a breathing animation. You can also configure each knob to be a different color if you want to, and you can set knobs to have this gradient effect, so it goes from one color to the other as you turn up or turn down the volume. The combination of very useful features, integrations, and profile switching means that the Mini is a very useful device. Overall, the Mini is definitely a worthy successor to the Maplewood version, and it's a nice step down from the more expensive Pro model. If you are looking for more information on the Pro, I have a video linked up here. That is my PC Panel Pro review. So there you have it. That's been the new PC Panel Mini and how it stacks up against its older and newer versions. Links for music and other stuff will be in the description. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.